the Great American Outdoor Show, aka the Outdoor Show. Uh, it's held in Harrisburg every year, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about it. This is Gary from Tremus Dynamics. I want to thank everybody for watching. So uh, the Great American Outdoor Show is uh, its a pretty big trade show that they have every year in Harrisburg. Um, it focuses a lot more on hunting and fishing than tactical stuff, but there there's uh, one whole room that's generally tactical type things or shooting type things, and that's where I spent most of my time. Way back in uh, 2013, uh, Reed promoters, the anti-gun douchebags from the fucking UK, pretty much shit-canned the show because they wouldn't allow AR-15s to be shown and everybody pulled out. But last year, in 2014, the NRA took over and promoted it, and they're up. they had like 170,000 attendees. And that's a lot more than Reed ever had. So uh, it was nice to see the, the gun culture come together and uh, support the show. They do, they've added uh, like country acts, you know, like doing concerts and stuff at the, in the evenings, uh, a ton more seminars, and of course, the vendors, which is what we all want to see. So uh, this is going to be uh, a five-part series, and let's do part three where I interview uh, Joshua Prince, a well-renowned uh, gun rights lawyer here in Pennsylvania. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm here with uh, Joshua Prince, and uh, how are you doing today? Doing good, Seth. Doing pretty good. Uh, you're a, a pretty big-time lawyer when it comes to gun rights and whatnot, and uh, I'm to stop here today at the Great American Outdoor Show and see what your take is on what are the most pressing issues that gun owners face. We, we have a number of pressing issues currently here in the Commonwealth. Uh, we have a number of municipalities that are violating our preemption code. We've sent over a hundred letters out to different municipalities asking that they repeal their unlawful ordinances and there's no requirement under the law that we give them that notice but we didn't want to burden the taxpayers so we wanted to give them a chance to do what's right unfortunately city of Harrisburg has refused and we filed suit against the city of Harrisburg good and as a taxpayer I, I hate to see my money go for that but I care more about my rights so. well and, and that's why I think anyone who's a resident of Harrisburg needs to contact Mayor Papenfuse's office and right. explain that they do not appreciate the fact that the city is opening all the taxpayers up to additional burdens because right. of their refusal to comply with state law. I'm going to put a link down here at the bottom, fellas, so that you have nowhere to call or email the mayor's office. Great. Uh, and some other issues that I think we're going to see in this upcoming year, one of the big issues is with mental health treatment. There's actually a bill been proposed by a representative in Philadelphia that if you ever seek mental health treatment, not that you're involuntarily committed, just seek treatment, you should be prohibited from ever being able to obtain a firearm or a license to carry. Now, what type of chilling effect is that going to have on individuals who may be having some difficulty? What right. that's going to cause is those individuals not to seek out the treatment they exactly. need. Exactly. Also, I think we're going to see a number of challenges to Pennsylvania's Mental Health and Procedures Act for those people who have been involuntarily committed. Uh, I've actually received several grants from the NRA Civil Rights Defense Fund to right. challenge Pennsylvania's Mental Health and Procedures Act. Currently, an individual can be involuntarily committed just based on a doctor's signature. They don't have the right to an attorney, they don't have the right to any form of due process such as uh, being able to submit evidence in their favor, being able to cross-examine people, or even having a neutral arbiter. And some people would say, well, how do you say they're not having a neutral arbiter? You have a doctor who doesn't know the person. The problem is, is many hospitals make a lot of their money off of involuntary commitments. And people don't realize that there are some hospitals that haven't met someone who didn't need to be involuntarily committed. And, and financial incentive, whether it's true or not, it makes it seem change. Exactly. And we recently had a Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals decision that said that an isolated involuntary mental health commitment was not sufficient to trigger a disability federally 
for the remainder of that person's life. We're going to be filing a similar suit here in Pennsylvania uh, at the federal level challenging Pennsylvania's Mental Health and Procedures Act. So we're, we're going to see that. Also, I understand Representative Saccone is working on some changes to Pennsylvania's Mental Health and Procedures Act so that hopefully there will be more due process allowed and the ability to obtain relief at this federal level. Which is good because most of my viewers can be deemed crazy. <laughs> but uh, what uh, what's your take on what's going on currently with the ATF rewriting everything as they see fit? Well, that's an out-of-control agency that needs to be reeled in, and we're working to do that. Uh, clearly, ATF believes that their prior determinations have no meaning or value. They've issued a number of determinations that now are in uh, conflict with the other determinations, yeah. and we're looking forward to push forward. Some of the viewers may not know, in the past, ATF actually determined that a shoestring, a shoestring, was a machine gun. Now, I wish Nike at that point had filed suit against ATF right. because they were putting out a lot of machine guns on the street, right, exactly. but they never did. It only took ATF, I believe, eight years to rescind that determination. Jesus. So That's insane. Yes. That's insane. And we're, we're seeing it happening right now, and uh, well, like the, the Sig Brace, right. and, and hopefully Sig's coffers are deep enough to... Well, and there's actually a company, SB Tactical, that makes the brace and sells it to SIG. SB Tactical at the SHOT Show came out with four new braces for different weapon platforms, not right. SIG related. Right. And so I believe SB Tactical will be challenging nice. ATF nice. as well. That's, that's great. Um, I also am aware that uh, you do some sort of uh, training things uh, about Pennsylvania gun laws do. around here. Where can people find out about that? On our blog, blog.princelaw.com, uh, we have an upcoming seminar for Jim Smith, who's running for judge in Berks County. Okay. That'll be Saturday, March 7th. There's information on our blog if you want to sign up to attend and, it. And it's a great blog. I mean, I frequent it regularly. I mean, I, I mean, you're how I get a lot of information. So. And also, if they go on our uh, Firearms Industry Consulting Group website, you can actually sign up for a newsletter that we send out. We actually have two. We actually do a machine gun shoot twice a year for our clients at nice. Eastern Lancaster County Rod and Gun. Very nice. Very it's nice. looking like our first one will probably be either May 16th or May 23rd. Right. And then the second newsletter is just a firearms law newsletter that we send out with new issues in that. Obviously, most of those issues are going to be addressed on our blog in right. advance, but we do also have that ability for people who don't want to constantly be checking our blog. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, it's been great talking to you today, and I hope everyone at one of your seminars, and I'll bring a couple of people here. Sounds great. Pleasure was all mine. Thank you. Have a good one. You too.